Are you looking for an easy DIY sourdough starter? Well, you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm James Brown with Barton Springs Mill. I'm working today from my home kitchen just a few miles down the road from the mill itself. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to create a sourdough starter for using with sourdough bread. Um, one of my favorite items for this is a WECK canning jar. That's W-E-C-K. Uh, these are made in Germany. This one happens to be a 850 milliliter canning jar. You'll notice it has clips, which we're going to remove, and a gasket, which we're also going to remove. We're not going to use these. We're simply going to use the glass lid sitting, resting on the top of the jar uh, so that as the starter grows and expands, uh, we don't have any issues with pressure. Uh, this is a very simple recipe. It's equal parts by weight, water, and flour. Today I'm using uh, ordinary tap water. I've left this in an open vessel overnight to let the chlorine off gas. Uh, the chlorine can be a hindrance to uh, the creation of a starter. We get lots of questions and comments about why can't I get a starter to, to started. <laughs> and one of the main reasons is if you're using chlorinated water that can be a hindrance. So we're going to start uh, by zeroing out our scale and we're in grams and we're going to add 100 grams of water. And then we're going to add our flour and this is Barton Springs Mill TAM 105 whole wheat. I strongly advocate using whole wheat to get um, your starter started. One of the reasons I believe this works so well is the indigenous yeast that resides on the outside of the wheat berries is still present. Um, that's not to say that it can't work with white flour but I think this is a better option or a more reliable option for getting started. So we're going to add, tear out our scale again and add 100 grams of flour. And then we're going to use uh, a spatula. Uh, the back of a butter knife works really well. In fact, that's what I use most days. Uh, a plastic sandwich spreader that I got from the restaurant supply, that works great as well. And we're just going to mix these to combine. It should be a consistency of Mm, thick pancake batter to muffin, sort of muffin batter, uh, but we want to mix adequately to get all of the flour hydrated. Doesn't take much. And then pat it down. And then place our lid on. Now at room temperature this probably takes two to three days to start seeing some significant activity. Another great choice if you've got one in your junk, junk drawer uh, is a rubber band. You can place this around the jar at the level uh, that the, the starter was after you mix and it makes it easier to gauge how much it's risen. Uh, what we want to wait for is to see some evidence of bubbles uh, and a little activity, maybe a little puffing up and then we're going to want to feed this. Um, and what we'll do is we'll discard half of this. So we'll have a remaining 100 grams of the, the original starter. And then we'll add 100 grams of water mixed to combine and then add another 100 grams of flour. Over time, within let's say the first 10 days to two weeks, certainly this starter will rise and fall more predictably uh, and become more voluminous as the organisms get a foothold in their new home. Um, and once you get to the point that this is rising and falling predictably, you're ready to start working with this and baking with this. We have additional follow-up um, videos on our YouTube channel, so please have a look at those. If this content was helpful to you, we ask you to like and subscribe. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.